Bash, the shell. You've probably used it, even if you don't know it. On most of the popular Linux distributions, it's the shell you get by default. It's also the basis of a whole lot of bits of glue between other Unix programs, things you use day to day. Bash is part of many software stacks that our modern way of life depends on. And I'm about to tell you just how badly the echo command in Bash is broken. I know, echo. You think it's such a simple command, it's not. Quick side note for beginners, it's easy to confuse terminal emulators and shells when you first come to use them, because almost every time you use a terminal emulator, it's because you want to use your shell. They're two independent programs. The terminal emulator renders the output of a program to your screen. Bash is just one such program that you might want to use this way. Terminal emulators don't have to launch shells when they start up. Shells are just programs after all. You don't have to use Bash. You could be using a superior shell program. Similarly and separately, you don't have to use the terminal emulator that came with your Linux distro. You could use a superior one. But anyway, if you're a beginner, don't let this worry you too much. Okay, back to echo. It's a really simple command, right? You know what echo foo does. Yeah, it writes the word foo to nobody's surprise. Okay, but what if you give echo something that looks like a program argument? Let's say you pass it dash a. Well, a really boring thing happens. It writes dash a. Dash b, same thing, just writes it verbatim. Dash c, same again. Dash d, okay, I think I know the pattern. Dash e, oh, I knew that was going to happen. I'm faking the surprise. Let's try another one. Let's skip to dash n. Aha. Dash n does something special too. Interesting. Let me know how my acting is in the comments. Many of you already know what these arguments do, but we'll come back to this later. How many times have you been debugging a bash script and you want to know the contents of some variable? So you do something like this, echo dollar path. We've all done it and it's totally fine, but consider that you might be generating a list of arguments to pass to some other program, for example. What if that list ends up being dash e? just dash e on its own. Maybe like this, you set program arguments to dash e. Try to echo that. It doesn't matter that the text came from a variable. It looks like dash e, which is special for echo. And so it does the special thing instead of echoing dash e. That means that echo dollar var will not always echo the value of the variable var. This is the fundamental problem with echo as implemented in bash. You cannot reliably use echo to output the contents of a variable. It's not possible. And I think that's a bug in Bash's echo implementation. And of course, no amount of quoting helps you here. Echo prog args with double quotes around the variable name. Well, since the quotes are removed by Bash before echo ever sees the variable contents, quoting does not solve this problem. Quoting does solve some other problems though. And failure to quote variables properly is actually the cause of a lot of bugs. Maybe I should do a video about shell injection sometime. Anyway, there's workarounds for when this is a problem. I'll get to those soon, but first let's look at an actual bug caused by not considering this behavior of echo. Zipgrep is a program that has a bug that exists because of this behavior of echo. I'm sure there's lots of others, but this is the first one I found when looking for bugs like this in common tools that you might expect to find installed by default on some Linux distros. Zipgrep is a tool that will search for a particular pattern of text in all files in a zip file and tell you which ones match. I'm going to make a file called foo, which contains the word bar, and I'm going to zip that up as foo.zip. And if I ask the unzip program to list all the files in foo.zip, it tells me there's one called foo, as expected. Now let's ask zipgrep to look for bar inside foo.zip. No surprises here. It finds that the foo file contains bar. So it tells us that. Great, that worked. Now let's make a file called dash e, which just contains the word bar. Now let's put that in a zip file. I'll call it e.zip. This is fine and it all worked. If I list the files found in the zip file, I see that there is one file and it is called dash e. Maybe you can see where this is going. Now I ask zipgrep to look for bar again, this time in e.zip. It should find a file called dash e, which contains bar. What it actually does is fail with a strange error message. Let's have a look at why this is. The answer is fairly simple. Zipgrep first generates a list of all the file names in the zip file. Then for each name in that list, it escapes the file name by echoing it into this said command, and then extracts just that file from the zip, and finally is able to grep that file for the pattern we're interested in. But when it tries to do the file called dash e, the name after escaping is an empty string because echo has interpreted it as something special. When it tries to extract this from the zip, the unzip program looks for a file whose name is the empty string. Naturally, it fails, and that's why we see this error message. We can fix this. Printf is kind of like a glorified version of echo. It behaves mostly like printf in C. Let's replace this echo with a printf like this. 
now the string will be printed exactly as it is passed to printf. It will not be interpreted as anything special. Let's try this out. Compare the original version with our modified version. Bug fixed. That's option one for a workaround to this issue. There's another option, one that wouldn't work for fixing this bug, but one that might be useful to know. To figure out what it is, let's look at what dash e and dash n actually do, and how bash's echo implementation handles them. The first place to look is the bash man page, which explains its echo implementation. You can see that it mentions the optional arguments dash e, dash n, and dash capital E. We're less interested in capital E because, on well, most systems, it's ignored. Dash n simply prevents the final newline character being printed. You can see the effects of this in your terminal by comparing these two echoes. Dash e enables interpreting of escape sequences, and you can see a list of all the escape sequences that are supported. Let's look at this example. Echo foo backslash n bar. It just echoes that exact text. The backslash n doesn't do anything special, but if we add dash e, then this happens. We can also remove the final new line by using dash n like this. Note that it's fairly common for Unix programs to allow multiple single char options to be specified next to each other. This is exactly the same as this command where we have the dash e and the dash n separate. But the way bash passes these arguments means that this also does the same thing. Interesting. But if we add an option that isn't recognized, then suddenly all of the options in that one argument are ignored. So here, dash enx gets echoed exactly as we typed it. So if we have a variable and we want to print its value to the screen, we can take advantage of this fact. And this is how the second workaround option works. Add a space to the end of the argument. We need the double quotes so that the space becomes part of the first argument. So suppose foo contained dash e. Normally this would cause us a problem, but this time there's also a space character at the end, which is not a valid echo option. So this whole argument is treated as not special and is printed as is. There's an additional space character at the end, but in this case, we don't actually care about that. It's not like we can see a space character at the end of a line anyway. Hmm? What's that? You have a terminal that renders little dots where trailing spaces are. Quiet, you. Anyway, this wouldn't have worked for our zip grep fix. Since we're using the result as an argument to another program, rather than simply printing it to the screen, if there was an extra space character in there, then it wouldn't work. So printf is still the best way to do this in general. Now that we're done talking about how the bash implementation of echo is tricky, I want to take a moment to look at other echo implementations. Almost every shell has its own implementation of echo. Let's look at these shells. Bash, dash, zsh, fish, tcsh, and conch. Each one of these has echo as a built-in command. Let's type the same thing into every one of these shells and see what each one does. This is the text that we're going to type in. It's an echo command. It's got some dashes, a dash n, some escape sequences, and some backticks at the end. Remember that we're now not just comparing the echo behaviors across shells, but we're also allowing other shell features to have an influence here. For example, string escaping, argument splitting, and command substitution. Each of these shells does something unique with this input. That's six different shells and six different results. Sometimes a single dash is special, sometimes backslashes cause escaping, sometimes they don't, and some shells interpret the backticks as command substitution syntax. I guess the lesson here is sometimes you have to think really hard about what your shell and your echo command are actually doing. I'll leave you with a challenge to complete using bash's echo command. The challenge is to get bash's echo to output the following two bytes and nothing more. Dash n. Just those two bytes. You're not allowed to have additional characters before or after them. So you can't use the trailing space trick from before. You must only use echo, no piping the output to another program to post-process it. And since you need just those two bytes, that means no new line character at the end. For a while, I thought that it was impossible, but actually it is possible to do this. And it's especially fun to give us a challenge to friends who haven't seen this video. So challenge your friends and let me know in the comments how they did. Oh, and then send them the video after. Not that I'm begging for views. No, no, I just... I really think they'll like the video. Yeah, that's it. Bye.